So now I have the pleasure to introduce a fun new segment to BBC where some of the youngest and most important critics will quiz 2008 BBC winner JAMA Software's founder and former CEO, Eric Winquest. With JAMA's recent exit, up and coming entrepreneurs should take note. Please welcome Eric Winquest and our panel of esteemed critics, seventh grader, Lauren Chayette, fifth grader, Angel Nachiganda Hausner, and third grader, Jareen Nachiwala Hausner. Let's welcome them to the stage right now. Hey there. Hi. Hi. This might be tougher than when I presented 11 years ago. I'm a little nervous about this. All right. Hi, my name is Angel Nachiganda Hausner. I'm going to ask you some questions. All right. I'm ready. Okay. What does your business do? All right. So my, my business, uh, so I'm the founder of JAMA Software. And we got our start here, well, really, it was 11 years ago. Uh, we presented here, and uh, we, won, uh, we won the conference. And at the time, uh, there was only one check, and it was for $105,000. So remember that number, because we'll have another, another number later. Uh, and that gave us the capital, the cash that we needed to go start building a company. And it was a software company, or it is a software company. And what we do is we help uh, other companies that are building things like robots, uh, medical devices, planes, spaceships, help their teams figure out how they're going to build those products and make sure that they actually work at the end of the day. So that's what, uh, that's what JAMA does. How did you get the idea to start JAMA Software? Um, so the idea came from uh, probably the way a lot of companies get started. Do you ever have an experience where you get really frustrated with something because it doesn't work right? So for me, it was I was using uh, some software that did kind of what we were trying to do. And it was really clunky and didn't work very well. It was really frustrating to use. And, uh, and so I thought, you know, I think I can build something better. And so uh, I asked my parents for some money, because that's where you go when you need money, right? <laughs> and uh, they, uh, they gave me some money, and so we were able to start the company. And uh, pretty soon, we were able to sell it, and other companies were giving us money. And so uh, that's how we got started. So did you want to do this job when you were little? <laughs> uh, I actually, I wanted to be an architect. I like to draw houses with, you know, all kinds of cool features and things like that. But uh, then I went to school to be a psychologist, uh, and then I wound up as an entrepreneur. So it kind of goes to show you don't really need to, uh, you can kind of become an entrepreneur with any background. So I just noticed this is here. Anyone want to talk about uh, what that is? So... Um, this is a money jar, so in our house, when you like say like a bad word or something, you have to feed money to the jar. Yeah, and so like we looked on our mommy's phone and Googled you to like see what you look like. <laughs> and we heard you say a little bad word, so... <laughs> All right. All right. I, I will work hard. So. Unless I get very excited, I'll work hard not to swear. <laughs> so What's the, how much, what does it cost? A dollar? Is that? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> and so you better be careful today or you have to put money in the jar. All right. <laughs> how did you come up with your company named Drama? The company name? You know, we, we get asked this a lot, and I wish we had a more exciting story. Uh, we came up with all these really cool names, and then you know how you have to have a website to have a company? And uh, every time we went with this really cool name to go buy the domain name, it was taken. So we did this for hours and hours and hours, and finally we got so frustrated, we were like, just give us an available domain name. And Jama Software popped up, and we were like, all right. <laughs> But it's been a great, you know, people get as confused with the juice company, Jamba Juice, yeah. sometimes. That's where it came from. What problem did you feel like you needed to solve when you created this product? Mm. Um, so 
the main problem we, we wanted to solve was when, uh, when you guys, you probably work on projects uh, at school, right? Where you have a group of people working. Yeah. And when you have a group of people working, everyone needs to understand, like, what's our goal? What are we trying to accomplish? How are we going to figure out who's going to do what and keep track of all that? And one of the things that was frustrating for me is when I was working on software projects and I would be working on one part of it and the test team would be working on another part and the engineering team on another part. And after a while, I would think we wanted to achieve this and the engineering team might have decided they want to go a little different direction and the test team a different direction. And pretty soon everyone's running in different directions. So the problem I was trying to solve was how do you keep everybody when they're working in all different parts of the world, maybe they're not they're in the same uh, same office. How do you keep everybody on track? Uh, so collaborating around uh, the work that they're doing. So that was the problem that I was trying to solve. Uh, we also want to make sure that you know that the products that are being built are safe. I mean that was the problem we're trying to solve for our customers. So another question is, did you ever play basketball? <laughs> did I play basketball? Mm -hmm. uh, I did once in seventh grade. I was terrible. Um, but I had a good team, and so as I cheered them on from the bench, I saw the power of what a great team. <laughs> you have people that are better than you at stuff, that that's, uh, that's not a bad thing. Do you get to fly to fun places with your job? Do I get to fly fun places? You know, I, I do, actually, um, and some not-so-fun places. But, uh, you know, one thing that was really fun for us uh, and exciting was we got to move uh, the family to... Holland to Amsterdam uh, for a year and a half while we opened an office there and had really a fun time. And that's a long flight. <laughs> yeah. Can girls do this too? If so, what should I study if I want to do this job? Definitely. Absolutely. Um, well, you know, and I think hopefully uh, a few years from now when you guys are in my position, we don't even have to ask that question because there's so many amazing female entrepreneurs leaders, residents, that uh, it's not even a, a question that we have to ask. But um, I think studying, you know, what I've seen is, I mean, I studied psychology and I wound up uh, as, a, as a CEO, so it doesn't really matter too much what, what you study. But I will say, you know, science, technology, engineering, math, like those are fantastic things. I wish I had done some more on, on the engineering side. Um, but back to the question, there are so many amazing female founders, uh, women founders. In fact, uh, maybe we can get the audience uh, to help um, because we can just think of a few. In fact, let's, if everyone can think about their favorite female-led company, uh, let's shout them out on the count of three and, uh, and we'll see what we come up with. All right? All right, ready? One, two, three. Cobb. Cool. All right. There's a lot. How did you feel when you won the BBC? Uh, I was very excited. There's a picture of me looking really crazy uh, from, that, from that. That's uh, uh, No, I was very excited. Uh, but I also felt uh, a little stressed because anytime you take money uh, from investors, as we, the last panel was just talking about, there's an obligation to pay it back. And I, I felt uh, that stress, uh, positive stress in some ways, that I had to make things work and I had to be able to uh, pay back our investors. And so, uh, so last year we, uh, we had a partial exit of the company and so we had an investor that wrote us a really big check for $200 million, so much bigger than that first check. Uh, and we used some of, the, some of that uh, money to uh, pay back our investors mm -hmm. and our employees uh, that had worked with us in the early days. And so, uh, so I was, um, kind of closed, I was super excited and I'd worried about it for 10 years and we finally got to close the loop and pay everyone back and I felt very relieved. Yeah. So now what are you going to do for your next job? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I spent the last year doing angel investing, which is where I uh, find companies and invest in them and help them out. I've got actually two companies in Bend. Shape um, and uh, Vector Remote Care 2 and Bend, so that keeps me connected to Bend. Um, but I don't know if that's for me. So I really like having a team, I like building things, and so uh, I might, uh, might want to do another startup. Where do you 
like work from? It's not Bend, but where? Yeah, I am in. I live in Portland. Oh, got it. So last but not least, but have all your dreams come true? <laughs> uh, I have many of my entrepreneurial dreams have come true because, again, kind of thanking the Bend community for that first initial check, uh, that really enabled uh, my hopes and dreams to come true, which was to build a company, uh, to create jobs, to uh, build a sustainable company that uh, continues even when I'm not there. And, uh, and so to that degree, yes. Is that it? I think so. <laughs> All right, but one more thing for you guys. I brought you guys some books in case you want to get started. Uh, so this one's called the Startup Squad. <laughs> Thanks. So you can uh, pass the, you have one of those? One. <laughs> All right. So that has lots of tips and tricks. And, uh, and then this is Kid Startup. So, thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.